Well, hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Welcome to uh, this uh, panel discussion. Um, I think we just closed the door, so that's our sign that, uh, that we can get started. So um, as you all know, the reason you're all here is to discuss uh, impact of the cloud on production and collaboration. And my name is Rex Grignon. I'm a, a former head of animation at DreamWorks Animation and co-founder, CEO of Nimble Collective, now at AWS. And we've assembled a fantastic a variety of panelists here today who all have thoughts on, on our topic of the day. So um, I'll just do a brief introduction of everybody and let them uh, introduce themselves to you. Uh, just do short introductions and then we can jump into some of the questions that we have that um, we're sure everybody's thinking about. Uh, and unfortunately, we probably won't have time for a Q&A at the end, but I uh, hope we, we cover everybody's uh, thoughts on this and you hear some, some nice new thinking here. So, um, so starting uh, to my immediate right, this is Karen Duflo, in, independent uh, producer formerly of Pixar and, and Spotlight Stories. So I'll let you introduce yourself here. And I'll do my best, yeah. stay short. Um, hi, everyone. Thanks for coming. You never know if there's going to be five people in the audience or, or more. Glad we have more. Um, so I, have, too, have a uh, background in animation, as Rex mentioned, some time at Pixar, um, some time starting my own company, and then most recently at Google, where we created a group called Spotlight Stories, and we were playing around with um, inter uh, interactive, immersive entertainment. And for that, that meant storytelling in... Um, in a 360 space, and it was just right at the uh, time when VR was getting a lot of attention, and so we got to ride, draft off of that for quite a bit, and made a couple of fun shorts. Um, that's, um, uh, but all still based very much on storytelling and working with um, artists and directors uh, and creators all around the world. So hopefully that provides some um, uh, ingredients for this conversation we can have today. Onward. Hey everybody. Uh, right, I was one of the guys who started Shotgun. I wanted to be a producer. I was in the business for a while and then I was frustrated with some of the problems that we saw working on large scale animation projects. So I started producing tools uh, for our friends that we were working with in production. Um, and that then became a product called Shotgun. So I've been working on Shotgun now for, for 12 years. Uh, started focusing on production management and then we've expanded into review collaboration, asset management as well. Um, and we joined Autodesk five years ago now. We're really excited about the future, looking to, to scale, and I'm leading the team uh, there at Autodesk. I'll take that mic this way, because I have where to go. Beside Don is uh, Michelle Grady, who's the Executive Vice President at uh, Sony Pictures Imageworks. So say hi, Michelle. Hello, everybody. So yeah, I'm uh, currently with Sony Pictures Imageworks. I've been there for three years. Prior to that, I was with a company called MPC. I've basically been in Vancouver in the post-production visual effects and animation business for 25 plus years. And I've been saying 25 plus years for a few years, and I'm going to continue to say 25 <laughs> plus years. Keep it vague. Um, we are, as Sony, we are uh, in Vancouver, in Los Angeles, in Vancouver, we hover between 750 and 1,100 people, and in, in LA, we're 150 to 200, so we focus on uh, both live action visual effects as well as full CG feature animation. Uh, so at that scale, definitely working with the cloud, working on the cloud and with the cloud at various levels. Awesome. And beside Michelle is uh, Jeff Bell, COO, Vice President and Producer at uh, Tangent Animation. Hey everybody, uh, yeah, so my name is Jeff Bell and uh, as, you, as you stated, I'm also one of the co-founders of uh, Tangent Studios which includes Tangent Animation, uh, which just finished uh, Next Gen on uh, Netflix and uh, we also have a, a technology group called Tangent Labs uh, and uh, we're going to commercialize the production management and asset management software that we utilize for our last couple feature films uh, later this year. So, Awesome. So now you know everybody. Uh, we'll jump right in and uh, and uh, you know see what comes up here. So, um, what areas of production are are uh, benefiting the most uh, when moving to the cloud? So, is it cost? Is it productivity? Is it creativity? Is it flexibility? What what are you each finding? And this is just free for all. Anybody feels like jumping in? Who wants to go? <laughs> um, so. 
uh, sure. Uh, <laughs> You're holding the mic, so you need to take out. Uh, all of those areas actually benefit in some way or another. For us on the on the cost side, it's interesting uh, in terms of being able to shift the cost to more appropriate parts of the schedule. Uh, you could take the budget instead of worrying about capex at the beginning on building out render farms. Uh, you can actually push that towards the back end and, and uh, actually uh, make the cash flows uh, a, a little bit nicer, a little bit kinder to the to the production itself. Uh, picking up people uh, is is quite easy when you can do it remotely. If people can work off site or you can pop up a small facility to house those artists, not. Uh, part of your main brick and mortar that definitely helps it helps on the brick and mortar side too obviously uh, we have facilities in multiple locations being able to synchronize that data for the artists among multiple locations is super super handy um, yeah I mean there's benefits all over the place for us anybody else want to jump in here when we did our first uh, short at Google which is now seven years ago um, that all felt sort of really revolutionary to to just pop up an animation studio such that we were calling it, you know, animation pop up. Like we can just do it. We'll find a place. We'll turn some lights on, and we'll hire some people. But as it turned out, everyone we wanted to work with was wherever they were in the world, and so we didn't know quite how to do that. Um, but now here we are, just that short amount of time later, and it's easier. Um, it, it's just how things are running, especially at a scale of something that's short and quick, and you want to work with that artist in wherever you know, Paris or Bangkok or whatever. So you're, you're able to do that. And I think the overhead, so creatively, certainly, um, it's, it's uh, opened up so many things, uh, certainly also at a time where there's so many more possibilities anyway, and so many more artists seem to be doing much more work anyway. But um, I think that the, the, the challenge to all of that, still the overhead to all of that is um, the communication. I think that's always been, you know, it's a human problem and it's going to be a cloud problem also. Cool. I might jump in there yeah. as well while the, yeah. while the yeah. mic is moving. Yeah, yeah. Um, there's the way, for us, there's the way we're using it now and then there's the way that we're going to use it in the future. The way we're using it now, we've been around 27 years. We've been investing in hardware for a long time. So we have a good capacity data center that we have in Washington that both Los Angeles and, and uh, Vancouver access. And that works for us 90% of the time, but the way the production works has always worked. You have your peak moments in time, um, but the way uh, filmmaking is going these days, as we all know, it's getting more and more back-ended. We want our clients, so speaking of creative, we want the filmmakers to have as long as possible to perfect their movie. They are taking that time, which often sh push pushes shot production to the very end. Um, and when once upon a time that was really limiting, where, the, where we either couldn't do it or we would have to spend a ton of money to do it, now we burst into the cloud, basically. So we use our we use our on-prem for most of it, and then we burst into the cloud for, for capacity reasons in the past. The capex required would have been significant. Um, so from an economic perspective, it helps us. Um, and then from also from a creative perspective for our clients, I think the days of looking back and thinking we couldn't make the picture better because we couldn't access something to compute it mm -hmm. is, is going to seem crazy at some point. Mm -hmm. So you want me to pile on? Yeah, jump in, sure. Um, interesting that you say collaboration or communication is a problem, because that's one of the things I was going to call out as a, as a huge benefit. I mean, we see, I think you all said, there's, um, if, you're, if, you're, if you're running a team, you want to have the agility to uh, grow the team as needed and find the most talented people anywhere in the world, if you can, to join the projects. That's the dream. Being able to then stay connected with them and, and, and collaborate on what you're making, no matter where you are, is one of the biggest advantages that I, that I see. Our customers are beginning to spread out, beginning to find each other, beginning to find talent. Talent is, I don't know how you feel, but talent seems to be, there's a big race for talent. Everyone's scaling and talent is scarce. Making sure that you can find great talent no matter where they are and stay connected all the time, to me, is one of the hugest advantages of leveraging the cloud. Awesome. Fantastic. And that was, that was pretty deep, and we got to hear from everybody. Anything that's not quite that obvious? Not that these were obvious, like they're bursting the cloud is something people know. Are there any benefits that you guys see that might not be obvious to people who are thinking, who are just are starting to think about this? We don't have to all answer this time, but if there's any thoughts here. I think there's a very human aspect to it, and it's specifically to the artists. Just the lack of, the, the reduction of anxiety 
you know, that whole wait time, you're at the end of a project, you're on your 11th hour and you're waiting for a render to come through because you want to get an iteration out, that seems small, but that is a, when you've got a crew of, you know, three, 400 people working on a project, it's a, it's a big deal and it, it certainly makes, they, it allows them to focus on what they want to, which is working on the creative. It makes them happier, it makes for a happier place. So just that human element of being able to iterate more quickly is, is pretty big. Yeah. On the human side too, one, one thing we talk about on my team is, you know, we're trying to help teams come together, do great work, but also get in time, get home in time for dinner. Um, and my wife is actually a supervisor, and when our kids were young, she would be strapped to her desk waiting for a render to finish, waiting, like she couldn't actually leave and stay connected at all. So I think there's a very real human, again, advantage of being able to go live your life, have flexibility, and still stay connected and check in. So I've seen that to transform many lives around us. And I think that's super valuable and important. Awesome. And that dovetails beautifully into, into the next thought, which is how our workflow is changing. Um, you know, um, like how are, just what you guys were just talking about. Um, how are, you know, are we leveraging the cloud, you know, to, to really change the way workflows go? Are we protecting old workflows? What are some of these new possibilities? I, I actually have a follow-up question okay. <laughs> more than an answer. Because I'm curious about, you know, my experience with it has been, um, or with working with the cloud or getting yeah. know that or wishing it worked this way or that way is limited to um, but kind of per show versus we're going to run a studio and this is the way it's going to run. I feel like I'm at a party holding my drink here and I set it down. Um, there is vodka in it. <laughs> um, there isn't. There isn't vodka in it. I'm just nervous. <laughs> no. But how? Um, so I'll play a moderator for a second okay. um, because you may have an answer to this too. Like how you might treat something that needs to be very big and macro versus something small and micro and. Um, you know, uh, every sh show that I'm doing is going to have a different look and different artists. And um, is is the can the cloud be flexible for that? As flexible as it can be for a bigger studio like Tangent that's got people all over the you know place and different types of artists, and different type of work styles. I just wonder if it fits in better. Um, the concept of it fits in better for something small or something big. Are, are the challenges similar or different? And if you're looking at it just in different ways, literally anticipate the next question. So perfect. Oh, sorry. Oh no, no, that's awesome. That's awesome. So workflows, scale of project, anything around that, that'd be great to hear. I'd like to know about too, like if you guys have experienced any kind of like artist resistance. I know it's definitely easy for us to sit up here because it's true that when it's working, you sit down and things are in front of you and you can pull them out and they work reliably and they render reliably and you have a review reliably and everyone's communicating perfectly and it's all in one channel, not 12 Slack channels. But do you find that because, is it, um, is that actually a true representation, or is it still a little chunky and aspirational? Yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. In some ways, it sort of socializes the interaction between the, the artists. They have to find ways. If they're not in the same facility, they have to find ways to communicate. So, you know, and, and it sort of behooves the software industry to, to make sure that those communication mechanisms are there. Uh, it's getting better, you know, like shot, the shotgun uh, review tools have been like really strong for us. They've helped us. Uh, th those are sort of some of the things that we're pursuing on our side as well. But it, it sort of does change the dynamic when you're not all in the same room. But at the same time, I've been in facilities where, you know, when teams grow beyond a certain point, you have multiple shows. Uh, and if they're, even if they're on two different floors, it's amazing how the communication breaks down. So it's not even, I don't even think it's a cloud thing where the communication can be an issue. It's, it's really a, a people thing and it's, it's trying to push the, te the teams to come up with uh, appropriate communication mechanisms. So I, I do think the tools can help resolve that. Michelle, yeah. Yeah, just one of the things that we're doing slightly the, that we're doing slightly differently because of the cloud is the way we're releasing our tools. So um, we're pretty active in the open source community. We uh, love the concept of that for a couple of reasons. One, our developers love advancing the state of the art. Two, we get to benefit from we get the benefit of our tools being out there and everyone working on them. And so what we recently uh, released was our queuing system, and we released that to the open source community. And specifically with the cloud in mind, hoping that cloud providers would pick it up 
and do that same thing, but set at, at such a scale, put rapid development into that system that would de certainly benefit us, but benefit everybody. And just the scale of the cloud is going to allow that open source to just advance that much That's faster great. and better. Yeah. Awesome. Does Do you think the, the studio or the, the project size sort of impact what parts of production you take to the cloud? So, so like, you know, what, what yeah, just just that. Is there is there a difference between smaller and larger productions? And it seems like we have a representation of both here. So it'd be, be good to hear that. I'll go really Michelle, fast. Michelle, take I'll it away. Really you have we, do, we do large scale production. So we don't do our visual effects projects yet on the cloud. We do our large scale CG features. And we do a portion of the large scale CG features on the cloud. So anything that's high priority we put on on-prem because it's got to come out quickly, but what we're really benefiting from is just the sheer volume of medium to low priority renders that to let those run overnight, we can basically double the size of the render farm at a really limited cost because we, for those lower priority renders, we use a preemptive system. And it's, it's just for a relatively reasonable cost, we get just such volume. Right. So large scale projects, but just a portion of those large scale projects, um, and that's an economic driver. The other part is because we have a 27, our pipeline started 27 years ago and is built since then, so just not everything's ready for the cloud yet, yeah, clearly. Absolutely. Jeff? Um, yeah, so we're pretty much all in on cloud. Um, uh, we're actually uh, selling off some of our on-prem hardware as we speak, uh, and, and we'll maintain some level of that for quick turnarounds on, on tests and things like that. But to give you an example, uh, on NextGen, we were able to go up to, I think, 150,000 cores um, for just it was about 35 days, and we rendered four versions of the movie in that 35 days. That's not something that a small studio like us used to be able to do. So, your own data center. Yeah, no, there's no way we could have paid for that that size data center. So it really does allow these smaller productions to uh, uh, sort of play at a different level. Uh, so for us, I don't think there's any production that we can't see going into the cloud. Uh, there's so many benefits in terms of flexibility that that's one of the reasons that we're also pushing on our software agenda and sort of uh, about to release our own software. It's also why we contribute to, as you guys do, we contribute to the open source. We funded Blender development. We've got our own Blender developers that also push code back into the open source, uh, hoping that the community um, uh, will also contribute and, and help us on our productions as well, so. And I you know, just, we'll just echo all of that. And just from a complete small project rather than like a small piece of a bigger project yeah of, co of course it's it's what's make it's what's made it's all possible and then you can have multiple ones on top of each other and then those learn from each other and the artists are learning from each other and so it's yeah absolutely it's made it it's made so much possible I can't imagine probably I don't know half the time of things and because really? well I mean because if you're I, I think if you do have that sort of um, legacy pipeline, obviously that's a gigantic ship to turn around. But if you're starting from scratch and it can be something experimental and new, then this has to be this has to be part of it. So, what were your team sizes at Spotlight? Well, things I guess would range between you know, uh, you know somewhere in the uh, we had a core team of in the 30, 20 to thirty, and then we would you know, expand to maybe as many as, I don't know, where Cassidy's in the audience, he'll, he'll fact check me, uh, around, I don't know, 70, something like that, yeah. So that's big, that's a lot of people pounding on the same thing over time. So to stay organized with that is, um, is tricky, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, and, um, so, and, and everyone looking at the same thing that is as freshly baked as possible is important and that was sort of not possible years ago. Awesome. Um, so, are there any? Uh, it's still still emerging as you're all describing. Um, it's not not every studio is fully there yet. Are there tools missing that um, that would increase your cloud usage? That would make that move easier? Or things you know that you'd really like to see? <laughs> no, it's perfect. I have a <laughs> Wait, can I, can yeah, I ask yeah, a question again? <laughs> Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is what I want to know okay, too. Okay, <laughs> I think it's more of a practical question. Like, are your how set up is your artist in location X, or do you have to shore that up and support that? You know, I'm 
certainly what we found, and we want to work with anyone anywhere. Uh, you know, you, you they may not be as prepped, right? They may not have the bunker with the monitors and the you know the power, right. um, and and how and if that's been a challenge for anyone, just from a rec even recruitment standpoint. Um, it certainly can be a, a challenge, but um, one of the things that we are looking at enabling is, is the PC over IP as well. So you can actually fire up on, on AWS, you can fire up pretty potent uh, workstations. Right. Uh, and you could actually do production work on iPads if you wanted to uh, through, through uh, remote uh, mechanisms. So that's one way to, to mitigate some of those issues. But um, yeah, so it, it, I, I, I can't see too many too many problems with, with cloud-based I mean, everything that we've run into, we've been able to solve. Um, there's, there are things with connectivity that you have to worry about, especially if you have remote workstations. Right. Latency can be an issue. Um, although we've had actually some pretty good results with a direct connect to AWS, and we've gotten down to, I think, 12 milliseconds latency. It's almost usable with a Cintiq, which is pretty cool. Uh, it's certainly usable for the other departments. Um, so there are, there are certainly ways to mitigate those things. Uh, in internet going down can be a <laughs> can be an issue. <laughs> Redundancy is good. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Good, good, good. Any other thoughts around? Yeah, I mean, what I so I have a different perspective. I'm not a studio, but we work with you know thousands of studios. What I see is you know, production management. It's all mostly gone to the cloud. So tracking right. production management that's all gone to the cloud. There's lots of tools like what we're doing that help people. They don't have to build that. They can just go. Review collaboration often happens outside the studio. I'm seeing a lot of that. You know, it's gone to the cloud already. There's also a lot of tools. What re uh, cloud rendering, especially with bursting, a bunch of people have been working on that. There's commercial options. Well, so many of our clients have begun to invest there. What I see is is left, especially for the legacy studios, is the the core data management, the core pipeline, like the, where the data is really heavy and there's a lot of dependencies. It does feel like that's a place where there's still missing commercial tools. Our clients that are going there are building a lot of things themselves. So for me, that's that's the area where it seems like good, there's a good opportunity still for innovation, whether it's open source or, or commercial products. And that seems to be the last piece that's kind of sticky, sticking around on-prem for many of our clients. I would totally agree with that. The tools that are missing from the cloud are our tools. We have all these great tools that our developers and our artists have, have created over time that were not cloud-based. So the effort to take that legacy pipeline to the cloud is real. It's got to be done, but you know we're, we're, that old analogy, we're a plane in flight. And to adjust as we go, we really have to weigh the effort versus the immediate benefit of putting all that, that human time is precious. We have to run, we're in a very competitive business. We have to run super efficiently in every moment of, of someone's time is precious. So digging into our tools to adjust what we already have to make them work in the cloud is, is a challenge. I was talking to a big client about that this morning. It's, uh, you know, I think if you have a legacy pipeline, an approach of gradual refactoring, making sure they're gradually, you have a plan, you have a strategy, you're working your way to the cloud, it makes sense. Many of our clients are beginning to do that, but the dependencies are so deep, the legacy is so deep, it feels a bit like there's an anchor that they're dragging behind them, and of course they have the 911 production challenges. So I see them looking at some of the new studios with a little bit of envy. It's like you're starting with a fresh slate, you know, definitely start putting your pipeline together, yeah. assuming that it's cloud power. If not 100% yeah. cloud, it's gonna be cloud power, it's gonna go there. So I think being a legacy studio, thinking about your path to the cloud remains a pretty large challenge. Yeah, I, I, on that side though, I mean, I think at some point you have to look at the opportunity costs and and make the choice to change. You ha you have to make that choice, I think. Uh, otherwise, you're I think you're going to end up on the wrong side of history. Um, when we started Tangent, we knew that that's where we needed to go from day one. So that's what we did, as right. you say, like right. the newer studios. Um, yeah, and that's that's kind of the, what we're basing our product around later this year as well is is actually cloud-based asset management. So perfect, perfect. So that actually you know perfectly dovetails into into my next question. Is we see customers like Untold um, Studios taking their entire studio to the cloud. Um, do you believe that that's the goal? Do you believe that's the future of this? Is taking everything to the cloud? 
And if so, you know, how does that impact, you know, there's going to be competitive landscape, how does that impact, you know, what new studios look like setting up and time to market for those studios, there's a whole bunch that, that may shift. Or how does it impact artists, you know, we've touched on it a little bit, so anybody jump in here. It's pretty hard to compete with Amazon on resources, so. <laughs> There's some things there, obviously, even just rendering, the, the agility, the ability to open up anywhere in the world with significantly reduced cost, but yeah, taking the whole pipeline to the cloud has some clear advantages in terms of agility for physical locations, yeah. being able to do, and then extending that to having artists work remotely. Clearly, the benefits are there. Right. right now, we always want the best artists, no matter where they are, so we put them on planes, disrupt them, move them, and often their families at high cost to us, so that's a clear benefit. Um, so yes, I think we're all moving there. There's some things to solve, though, for sure, in the business model that are going to, lots of things are going to come up. You can't take away the fact that filmmaking is a collaborative effort. And so the, we've, we've, the communication tools are so much better than they used to be based on going global, but they're just have to, gonna go, have to go next level yeah. when people are dispersed. And then there's the elephant in the room, which is hubs for animation and visual effects exist where tax incentives exist. Mm -hmm. Those tax incentives are because of job creation. Mm -hmm. When we're in a physical location and our artists are dispersed, I'm sure our governments aren't gonna be super happy about right. that. So that's gonna be a disruptor. It will, we will come to it, but there's stuff definitely to be resolved. Mm -hmm. Would, do, you, do you believe that it, it is the future of a studios being entirely in the cloud, though? Once we, once we tackle some of those, once we figure out you know, strong collaboration. By the way, and, and you just sort of hinted at it, Michelle, a lot of people equate going to the cloud with necessarily being remote, and they're exactly. not necessarily. You can run in the cloud in one building still. So, exactly. and I often say this to folks, it, it doesn't change. You can still have a studio where everybody's under one roof, but now there's an option uh, that you now have an opportunity, say you have a lower budget, you can actually distribute a lot of your workforce. So um, just to make sure that, you know, Folks understand those, those two things aren't actually aren't necessarily right, right. connected. Yeah, I think the pipeline can be in the cloud, but the physical ability to work together will not go away. There'll be, in my mind, we'll see. I might be wrong. We're going to absolutely already making selective decisions on who can be and what's str be, being strategic about wh where people and which people are what remote. What percentage of your workforce? Exactly. Yeah, yeah. How often and all that stuff. But you just cannot take away. I, I don't believe you can replace the benefit of camaraderie and collaboration being physically together. There is just a human nature element to that when you can go grab lunch or grab a beer. Yeah. There's something about having someone far away in another time zone that you don't personally know, and especially when they need something from you or you need something from them, yeah. you like them less. You just right. do. So it, actually getting together with them <laughs> physically every once in a while, right. getting on a plane or... Yeah, together. exactly. Jeff brought up an idea that I, I've always long, you know, thought is going to be a part of this is popping up a little temporary workspace okay. where that team, say the Vancouver team or the Chicago team or whatever, can get together, but not necessarily have to be in, in with the, you know, the parent studio. So, um, you know, it seems like that's another way to facilitate that in-person connection. Um, so w one other thing that we were considering as well, like brick and mortar, obviously, is it's kind of a dead cost. It's an overhead cost that I'd rather pay artists, like uh, that, because that's it's not the building Yay. that creates the, the it's not the building that creates the movies. It's the artists and the technical people. So uh, even considering things like hoteling, where people can work from home for a day or two, we can still be still collaborate and still come on site and be part of that team uh, is also something that might be interesting to explore. So that instead of going from you know whatever we've got now, I think whatever it is, and going up in size, we can stay at that size and, and pay the artists and not pay the landlord. Well, we have to pay the landlord, but <laughs> not pay the landlord more. Well, you can now pay, you can now pay for, with WeWork or something, you can now pay yeah. for the space you use, yeah. just, just you know, what you use, which does change the recipe again. It, sure. it changes the economics and, you know. Were you gonna say something else, Michelle, or no? no? Okay, agreeing. cool, cool, cool. Um, any other thoughts on that? We can go to some, uh, did you have a thought or no? Yeah, I mean, I, you asked the question, is, is all production in the cloud, is it going in the cloud, 100% yeah. cloud? We have a bit of a debate on my team if it's 100% cloud or just cloud powered. Mm -hmm. I mean, but cloud for sure. You know, is there gonna be a bit of hybrid always or 100% cloud? I, I, we'll see. I think we're in an interesting time though where it's 
it's transition. This is a time of change. So right now there's still a lot to build. There's a lot of things getting in the way. But we look forward a few years and we definitely imagine a world where it's way simpler and easier for teams to come together and work together on projects. It's the barrier to entry is way lower to get the tools, the infrastructure, you know, what you need to make a, a film together for a group of people that just have a great idea for a story. So I, I feel like for sure, like this is a transition period, there's a lot to build. It's, we're going to the cloud for sure. I think there's gonna be a lot of benefits for uh, everyone in production. I personally have been thinking a lot about the future for artists. Like I talk to a lot of artists who have to live in specific cities that they don't wanna live in. They're, they can't go back home where they would like to live. Like I imagine there's gonna be a better world in the future if we look forward <laughs> long enough for artists that they can work, they can find work, great work, they can work with great teams anywhere in the world. And I think it'll be interesting if the leverage kind of pushed back to great artists where they have the opportunity to choose what show they want to work on, right. what producer they want to work on, what, what the producer's you know, Uber star rating is. Do they want to go work on that show or not? <laughs> now, I think that would be an awesome version of the future for artists. And I think the cloud's gonna enable that. Awesome, that's great. Oh, Karen. Because yeah, I have a high rating in Uber. <laughs> I've heard. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Um, but I, I, no, I think it's, um, and expanding on that, it's uh, because there's just um, the potential for so much opportunity. And I hope it's, I hope it becomes real. It looks like it will with a well, we workspace and the, you know, as long as we can um, keep making, you know, cool stuff, there's this moment right now where everything's potentially gonna cross over. A film person could work on a games thing, a games person could work on a film thing, especially the more that, you know, Unreal's taking over the world and, and Unity, you know, it's real time in general is taking over or um, just providing such quick uh, ability to make something and see it and share it. Um, I think that all factors into this cloud conversation as well. Awesome, that's great. So, so with all this, Beautiful remote collaboration or in uh, in-house collaboration. What are some of the what are some of the successful practices um, around remote collaboration that you've seen or that that you'd like to see maybe around? What makes that really work? And you know maybe conversely, what is it that that makes it not work? Because I have you know a lot of experience doing this, and you can see when it's not going to work right away. I can go in and sort of tell right away this is not going to be a good experience. But I'd love to hear that you know what. What are the things that will make remote collaboration really work for, for both the artist and the, and the studio? Well, we fully believe a very important ingredient to make remote collaboration work is beer. <laughs> and you said this, Michelle. <laughs> I mean, I, you know, building an actual connection with the team that you're working on in person. You know, I think you gotta get on planes. If you're gonna be distributed, you often have to get on planes, get people together. And then I think actually remote collaboration can work. So there's something really powerful about what you said. I don't know. I don't know if I fully believe that everyone has to be together all the time. But I think yeah. they have to be together some of the time. And as the tools get better and better and better, and it feels like I remember actually when we started Shotgun, we were fully distributed, but we didn't have screen sharing tools. We were doing like video conference call. You remember doing video conference calls, with people? And like I didn't. There's like long silences, and I don't know if the engineers were flipping me off or if they were pondering <laughs> quietly. And now I have video, con like we're looking at the same screen, we're looking at each other's faces, right. and I feel like way more connected yeah. to them. So, so much beer plus, plus faces. Yeah. Beer, beer and faces. <laughs> beer plus faces? <laughs> That's what we're saying. That, that is exactly the recipe. Yeah. <laughs> well, good, yeah. I mean, there's, there's clearly, you know, that uh, I, I knew a, uh, I know, a, a very uh, accomplished producer, and, and she always said, animation is communication. And, you know, there's always artists communicating with other artists, with producers, with supervisors. With there, It's just constant communication. So it seems like, you know, that connection and communication is the common, you know, theme for, for how to make that successful. And it comes right down to just, you know, from my experience, where the microphone is, where the camera is, where the lighting is, when you do have video conferencing and you are remote, it can be a terrible experience or it can actually be a, a, an experience that creates a connection. So for anybody doing that, it's worth taking the time on both ends of a, of a connection to make sure that that's a, 
you know, a, uh, you know, a high quality, as high quality as it can be. Um, well, great. Okay, so here's the big one now. Um, uh, if you were, if you were to create a, if you, if you ignore legacy and you say you're starting a new studio from scratch today, um, which is very different than even five years ago, <laughs> um, you know, when it probably would have been on-prem and maybe some, you know, cloud bursting, maybe in, in the earliest uh, uh, days, how would you build your new pipeline today? Let's say you got, we won't say money is no object, but, um, but uh, how would you build a, a, a studio pipeline today from scratch? And I want to hear from everybody. I know, I think Michelle, <laughs> Michelle should go, but I think you start with um, a great idea that everyone can rally around. You know, no, really, you know, it still has to be work worth doing, right? And um, have that sense of we're all putting this show on together, right? So you can have that sense of dailies. It's so funny we don't say that word that much anymore. Well, I, I don't, I don't, I don't. I don't know if you guys say it as much, but um, so I don't know. I would just just don't want to not mention that the importance of that um, because that's what's going to get all your artists who you know are so coveted now right right now anyway i i i don't know I, I, what would you do to do it different or how how would you start would laying you, the groundwork a, well i i think i know where. i'd call you i'd say rex <laughs> <laughs> i need some help um, what's what's my best bet here and and what you know are you creating it yourself because i think you know i've worked with lots of engineers too who want to build it themselves or are you going to you know plug in you know, to shotgun, like, what do you, you know, what does the team want to do? What does the project need to, to do to decide what your first, what your first step is, right? Which is probably pencil and paper still anyway. Yes. I mean, I, I think in the future, three to five years in the future, you should just be able to hit a button and set up your pipeline. It really is about, we have the story, we're aligned, we're excited, we're off and running. I think now we're, we're not there yet. Um, so... I, if I was building a studio from scratch, um, I would certainly look to leverage um, great off-the-shelf tools where I could. I'd be very careful about you know, building things I don't have to. I would make sure that my technology leader um, was senior enough and visionary enough to understand the cloud and could lead the team and be bold. Like Jeff, what Jeff said really resonated with me. Like some point, someone has to say, we're going this direction right. and it's going to happen. Yeah. So I think that is really um, key. And then I would, uh, if not 100% cloud, would everything, everything we would do would be anticipated, it would be cloud powered, cloud enabled, absolutely. So a combination of off the shelf, great technology leadership, partner with the other the technology providers uh, that are out there, great cloud enabled. It's, it's hard to envision starting from scratch, having this amazing, um, Truly, uh, having an amazing pipeline that uh, developers and artists have, uh, have improved over all these years where we write our bespoke tools specific to the project that really impact the artistry of that particular project is, is, is great. So yes, having lots that you can leverage that are at a push of a button, but the ability to develop bespoke tools that are the right creative solution for those projects is still key. So. Um, we were to start again, clearly everything would be cloud enabled, but I would really uh, still value the ability to deep dive on certain creative solutions that uh, um, that we work on and, and own for a period that are, are really bespoke to us. Just make sure that's cloud enabled. Because I look at the value of the pipeline that we have, I'm gonna use a horrible pun here. It's basically the ground, that, that pipeline and all those tools that we've developed over those 27 years are the ground upon which we collaborate and create and sort of Topsy turvy that and put it no longer the ground and it's the sky is 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 the ultimate goal. But really, I've seen the benefit of having all those bespoke tools and, and and how important those are to differentiate you as a studio from everybody else. And and we know that all of our all of our people, production, dev, artists, can be somewhere else should they choose to be. So what makes them want to work for us? It is a lot to do with the collaboration, the culture, so that's a whole subject around remote working, has nothing to do with the cloud, but just the, the tools that we create and the ability to use those tools in our particular pipeline, I think is pretty, it's a differentiator anyway that we need to um, capitalize on. Um, I think I've had the chance to start from scratch four, five <laughs> times, Rob, <laughs> yeah. So we scrap it every time and start over because you, you learn many lessons through all these productions. Um, and it, 
the path that we're on now to the release of the software that we're working on has been a period of about five years. Uh, so we put a lot of these plans to move to the cloud and sort of cloud enable all of our production about five years ago. So would we do anything different today? Probably not. We th This has been our plan f since the inception of this company. So um, I, I'm just gonna go back to say like sometimes people have to make hard decisions and, and, and move forward. And it's not it's not necessarily just in the short term, right? It sounds like it's you know in the short term might might you know you need that visionary uh, you know to to who sees like Don saying you know that this is where we need to go. It may not immediately be in that first quarter or whatever. The benefits may not be clear, but over time, it seems you're all sort of saying much the same that over time that's where you know it benefits everybody. If you can put, you know, I always say you're putting more money on screen, which means you're putting more of your budget towards artists. And um, it just seems like that's the future of all of this. Um, um, and it was very interesting hearing, Michelle, you said it a number of times that your bespoke tools, your custom tools are a very important part of that. Um, that's great to hear that. And it's something that, you know, we should make sure that everybody who's designing all these future systems hears that because those differentiators to you sound like that's what makes, say, Sony, Sony or, or someone else, someone else. It's not necessarily all the infrastructure that enables you getting there. It's what you do once you're there. It sounds like that's really great to hear that. So, yeah, I would add to that, Michelle, I, you know, I, I, told, I see that a lot, like the capturing the nuances of your workflow and making sure that you've got development resources that can do that and to, to help you put the unimaginable up on screen is key. I think it's, if you're starting a, f a studio from scratch, you just wanna make sure that the money that you're putting towards engineering is gonna go to just that nuance. So leveraging IT expertise from like Amazon to make sure you're TPN compliant. Like, I mean, that, that, you know, it's, there's a lot of places you could invest in technology where you don't have to specifically so you could invest in the places that make a difference. Did you have something you wanted to add, Jeff? You seem like you, oh, no, no, okay. Yeah. yeah. Like shotgun, I mean. Uh, Take the mic, like, yeah, sorry. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> uh, APIs are very important. So I think for companies like Sony or, or us or, or whomever, um, if you're not going to build all of the underpinnings and you're going to utilize somebody else's uh, asset or production management uh, systems, APIs are super important because that then allows you to plug in your bespoke solutions for that particular uh, project or uh, to, to get the Sony look or the tangent look or whatever it might be. So. I think that's very important from a software side. So it sounds like use what's there to do a lot of that baseline heavy lifting of getting to the cloud, have a team that can write custom tools that are your differentiator, need handles into all that infrastructure, um, good practices around collaboration, uh, maybe some portion of the team on a, in a brick and mortar, maybe some you know leadership or supervisor part of the team sounds like we're, we're hearing a little consistently. Uh, maybe a more elastic workflow that you can bring artists on as needed, not just bursting rendering to the cloud, maybe even bursting talent to the cloud. Um, and that sounds very exciting for as an artist and uh, you know that the, the future, like Don was saying, people can live where they want and participate in projects from all kinds of different uh, studios and directors. I had this strange vision when you said bursting talent to the cloud. <laughs> <laughs> Well, very cool. That's been uh, very, very exciting to hear everybody's thoughts on all this stuff. Unfortunately, we don't have a whole lot of time for uh, questions. I think, are we wrapping up, James? Are you giving me the high sign? So um, thanks to everybody. Any last words anyone wants to say here? We all good? We've had enough last words. Um, thank you very much for, for coming today. I really appreciate all the all the, the, the innovative thinking that you're all uh, that you're all putting into this. I feel very excited about the future of, of what production looks like and the power that this is going to give uh, filmmakers to start our own studios potentially, you know, down the road without a big, huge fundraising and big capex, this really does sort of change the dynamic of, of starting new studios. So thank you for all your thinking, and really appreciate you being here. Thanks, everybody. Thank you.